if you are looking for some support for current affairs if you are a fresher you are a working professional you are a repeater but you want some support for current affairs then i have a program for you uh, i have given the uh, brochure and also the uh, announcement video link in the description you can watch if you are interested hello all welcome back to current affairs settler series i'm guna madivanan from offices ias academy in today's video we are going to discuss about india's nuclear program first let us understand nuclear energy so it is a form of energy that is released from the nucleus so in the atom you will have nucleus so from that nucleus energy is released that is called as nuclear energy so we have two ways one is nuclear fission another one is nuclear fusion derive the energy so for example what is this nuclear fission nuclear fission what we will do is we will take an atom okay say the atom you will have nucleus so what we will do is we will split this atom when we split this atom when we split this atom so basically we will have a neutron we will make the neutron to hit this atom the neutron will bombard this atom Splitted. split will release enormous amount of energy in the form of heat that will be used for using electricity See, in thermal power plants what we do the coal is used uh, to produce by burning the coal generated that heat is used to convert the water into steam that steam is used to run the turbine from which we draw electricity likewise nuclear fission what we do we will bombard the nucleus of an atom with a neutron we will break the atom energy is released from of heat that heat is used to heat the water convert that into steam that steam is used to run the turbine electricity right this is nuclear fusion now what is nuclear fusion so here here we will try to fuse two atoms so here we will try to combine the nuclei of two atoms to make into a single heavier atom that fusion that fusion also results in enormous amount of energy inside the sun nuclear fusion goes on inside the sun nuclear fusion goes on nuclear fusion is what all the nuclear reactors today we have our nuclear fusion reactors so nuclear fusion reactors at the experimental level it is going on but practically we are using only nuclear fusion reactors so here the nucleus of an atom will be split to two or more smaller nuclei that will be energy for instance let's take a neutron that is going to hit the nucleus of an atom called as uranium 235 so we are taking a neutron that is hitting uranium 235 that uranium 235 that is going to split into two smaller nuclei right one uranium 235 atom i am taking i am dividing into two i am dividing into krypton nuclei barium nuclei so what i do is i take uranium 235 uranium 235 atom i am taking this atom i am bombarding it with a neutron by bombarding this now divided into two atoms one is barium one is barium another one is krypton along with that three few three free neutrons three free neutrons will also be generated so we take a source neutron we are going to send a neutron that is going to bombard the uranium 235 that divides uranium 235 into two one is called as barium another one is called as krypton along with this division three few three free neutrons will be available now these three free neutrons that is going to bombard other uranium 235 is going to bombard other uranium 235 and that is also going to get splitted 
and that will also release three free neutrons. These three free neutrons that is going to go and bombard other atoms. So it will become a chain reaction. Every time bombardment happens, huge release of energy. Right? So these extra neutrons will hit other surrounding uranium-235 atoms and that will also split, that will also generate additional neutrons, get a chain reaction, huge amount of energy in the form of heat will be released. We all know this. Now what is this India's three-stage nuclear power program? So in India, with respect to uranium, we have just 2% of the world's reserve. What is the problem with uranium? Even in this 2% of the naturally occurring uranium, almost 99.3% of the naturally occurring uranium is uranium-238. This is not fissionable. This cannot be split. I mean, it's not efficient. Only 0.7% is uranium-235. That is fissionable. That is fissionable, that is effective. But the uranium-235 is very, very less. But take thorium, we have 25 percentage of global reserves in India. 25 percent of global reserves in India. Take India, the eastern coastal states, Odisha, Andhra, Tamil Nadu and also from Kerala will have huge amount of thorium. Thorium in India, it is present in the monazite sand sand in which we will be having this thorium. Now, okay, what is the advantage of thorium? Whether thorium is fissionable? Thorium is not fissionable, but plutonium and thorium can be used to produce uranium-233. This uranium-233 is highly fissionable, highly efficient. So, by making use of thorium, we can Develop uranium-233, which is not naturally occurring. We have it. The help of plutonium. So, to make use of our thorium only, we have this three-stage program. So, this three-stage program, the three-stage program that starts with, uh, starts with pressurized heavy water reactor. The next stage is fast breeder reactor. The next stage is advanced heavy water reactor. Let me explain each stage one by one. Stage one. Stage one, what we will do is, we will take the naturally occurring uranium. We will take the naturally occurring uranium. Naturally occurring uranium. Okay, that will include U-238 as well as U-235. Okay, we will use this. So if you take a nuclear reactor, if you take a nuclear reactor, that nuclear reactor will be having fuel cells, having fuel cells, small, small rods like fuel cells, you will see fuel elements, you will see fuel elements, fuel cells, small, small rod, one centimeter rods, you will see thousands of rods, you will see thousands of rods, thousands of rods, that is the actual fuel, contains uranium-238, uranium-235, Uranium-235 is actually fissionable and this rods will be in a moderator. So, we will be using heavy water as the moderator. We will use heavy water as the moderator or I will draw like this. Along with this, we will be having control rods. Having control rods. Will be surrounded by concrete towers. Surrounded by concrete towers. You have to visualize. So now, what happens is we will be sending a neutron. We will be sending a. We will, we will allow a neutron to bombard these cells. So we will send a neutron to bombard. The neutron will bombard. It will split the uranium two thirty five. Once uranium-235 gets split, we know it splits into two nuclei. So, free neutrons. So, free neutrons will be released. Three free neutrons will be released. These three free neutrons will hit this fuel cells and that will release in more neutrons. 
and that is going to hit and that is going to result in more neutrons so like that it will be a chain reaction. Now what is the use of this, this water, this water we will use heavy water, we will use heavy water not the regular water, heavy water is an isotope right, uh, we will be using heavy water, this is how the reactor will be. So we will, the reactor will be, the heavy water is an isotope of hydrogen called as deuterium that will be used, okay, that will be used. So the use of this heavy water is, acts like a moderator, what is moderator sir? It will slow down the movement of speed of this neutrons, the neutrons they are going to move at a greater speed, then we will not be achieving that exact fission reactions. Neutrons has to hit, the speed of the neutron has to be reduced. So for which we need a moderator that is heavy water. And this moderator will also help in cooling down. Because huge amount of heat is produced, we have to slightly cool down, this moderator will be useful for that. This moderator helps in reducing the speed of the neutron. The moderator will also keep the reactor little cool. So ultimately, fission reaction is happening, huge amount of heat will be generated, that heat will be, that heat will be used, that heat, we can use that heat to generate steam. So this will be, this will be steam generator. So we are using the heat to boil the water, steam is generated and that steam is used to run the turbine and accordingly electricity is produced. So in this stage one, so in this stage one, Electricity, when heat is produced, electricity we can produce. There are some outcome, there are some outcome in the stage one. What is that outcome, sir? So once, you, okay, before that, what is the role of this control rod? Control rod. So if you want to stop the reaction, if you want to stop the reaction, you will be sending in the control rod. Control rod will absorb the neutrons. It will absorb all the neutrons, will be absorbed by this control rod. So the neutrons are absorbed, the reaction will stop. If you want to speed up the reaction, remove the control rod, neutrons will continue the nuclear fission reaction, power can be generated. This is stage 1. In the stage 1, one of the byproduct, one of the byproduct is plutonium. Some limited amount of plutonium will be generated. And remember, the natural uranium is used. The natural uranium has 238 and 235. This 235, we are splitting it and we are able to produce fission reactions. Okay, stage 1 is the, uh, the stage 1 is helping us to produce a byproduct called as plutonium. Heat is used for producing electricity, that is separate. Okay, now this plutonium, one of the byproducts is plutonium. Plutonium is limited in quantity, it is less, not sufficient plutonium. Yet, limited plutonium, get limited plutonium, right. Now this plutonium which we get as byproduct that we will take it to stage 2, that we will take it to stage 2. 